Hi, I am Georgios Papadopoulos and welcome in this video on Sixlopan fragment forwarding. So far, you have seen the original Sixlopan per hop fragmentation and reassembly mechanism defined in RFC 4944, where an IPv6 packet is expected to be reassembled at each intermediate node, decompressed, pushed to layer 3 and to be routed and then compressed and fragmented again. Today, I will introduce you to an alternate approach called 6 Lopin Fragment Forwarding or 6LFF, whereby an intermediate node forwards a fragment without reassembly. The routing decision is made on the first fragment of the IPv6 packet, which has the IPv6 header and thus the IPv6 destination address. The first fragment is forwarded immediately and some state is kept in the intermediate nodes to enable forwarding the subsequent fragments along the same path toward the destination node. Let us now dive deeper to see the whole process of 6 Lopan fragment forwarding. 6LFF was published in November 2020 and it is defined in RFC 8930. The core idea of 6LFF is when receiving the first fragment of an IPv6 packet, an intermediate node decompress the IPv6 header to determine the next hop according to the destination IPv6 address in that fragment. It then forwards that fragment immediately to that neighbor and remembers the datagram tag of that fragment. When receiving subsequent fragments of the same IPv6 packet, which have the same datagram tag, the node forwards them to the same next hop. Once all the fragments have successfully arrived at the destination node, only then is the IPv6 packet reassembled. To do so, 6LFF introduces the Virtual Reassembly Buffer, or VRB, technique that can be implemented without a change to RFC 4944. Similarly to a switching table, each intermediate node maintains a VRB table in which the entries correspond to IPv6 packets in the process of being forwarded. In the beginning, all VRB tables of all nodes are empty, though they do have a maximum pre-allocated memory. Each VRB entry is a tuple with four elements. The link layer address of the previous hop, the locally unique datagram tag of the incoming fragment, the link layer address of the next hop, and the locally unique datagram tag for the outgoing fragment. Now, assuming 64-bit link layer addresses and 16-bit datagram tags, one VRB entry requires 20 bytes of memory. When an intermediate node receives the first fragment of an IPv6 packet from a neighbor with a datagram tag not registered for that neighbor in the VRB table, first it will create an entry in the VRB table and will record the link layer address of this previous hop and the datagram tag of the incoming fragment. Next, it will determine the link layer address of the next hop based on the IPv6 address contained in that fragment, as well as will pick a new datagram tag for the outgoing fragment that is unique for the next hop node. Moreover, it will set a timer that allows discarding the stale 6LFF state after some timeout. Then, all subsequent fragments of the same IPv6 packet will go through the same process and will be forwarded to the next hop by employing this newly created VRB entry. More specifically, the intermediate node for each subsequent fragment will search its source link layer address and datagram tag in the incoming columns 
of the VRB table and forward it based on the outgoing columns. Finally, upon forwarding the last fragment, the node clears the VRB entry from its table. As a result, the VRB technique allows intermediate nodes to immediately forward the received fragments without reassembling the complete IPv6 packet first. The advantages of employing the VRBs and the fragment forwarding scheme over the Perhop reassembly are multiple and significant. First, the end-to-end -end latency should be greatly reduced since the intermediate nodes do not need reassemble and then fragment again the IPv6 packets before forwarding to the next hop. Next, the end-to-end -end network reliability should be improved since the memory footprint of VRB is just the VRB table and not the actual size of each IPv6 packet, reducing thus the fragment drop probability significantly. Furthermore, the datagram tag issue is solved by swapping the tags at each hop instead of having the same globally unique. Even though the 6LFF based on the VRB method overcomes certain issues of per hop fragmentation and reassembly, it comes with some limitations. First, there is no fragment recovery built in. In case a single fragment is lost along the multi-hop path, then there is no mechanism in 6LFF for the node that reassembles an IPv6 packet to request for it. This issue introduces unnecessary traffic in the network, since the remaining fragments are forwarded even when the destination node can never reassemble the original IPv6 packet. Moreover, it requires the whole IPv6 packet to be resent from the source node. Next, 6 lopan fragment forwarding does not support per fragment routing. Since only the first fragment contains the IPv6 header and thus the IPv6 destination address, all subsequent fragments must follow the same path toward the destination as the first fragment. A side effect is that the first fragment must always be forwarded first. Finally, even though each entry reserves a small footprint in the VRB table, there is a probability for IPv6 packets to be dropped. Indeed, the size of the VRB table necessarily remains finite. Thus, in the extreme case where the number of IPv6 packets concurrently traversing an intermediate node is larger than the size of the entries in its VRB table, then IPv6 packets are dropped. To conclude, 6 lopan fragment forwarding is an implementation technique, not a new protocol that makes it fully compatible with the perhop fragmentation and reassembly of the original 6 root-over mode of RFC 4944.